Matt Walsh and another talks about transgender people, and I just love the name of this title. Transgenderism is a doc doctrine for bullies. Freaking hilarious, especially coming from like hardcore Christians uh, on their right that love to use their uh, belief system to bully others. Uh, I think I was familiar with the term transgenderism. You, you heard the term, but nobody that I ever encountered when I was a kid identified that way. You, you know, I hadn't even heard that term until I want to say about eight or nine years ago. I remember people used to say transsexual. True, yeah. And transvestite. So a transvestite was someone who wanted to dress in opposite sex clothing. A transsexual was someone who'd actually done hormone therapy and had a sex change surgery. And now with this idea of transgenderism, it's just merely self-identification and you can do that other stuff maybe. Yeah, because that's how reality works. And, yeah, uh, transgender wasn't, like, a, a more commonly used word until people started using it more and more and decided that's the words they prefer to use to describe themselves. If you yeah. want to. So that actually, I think, in the past decade has really come to light. And then, of course, terms like transphobia, which didn't exist and was not a word until very recently and seems to be the primary. Uh, well, the behavior of transphobia did exist back then. That's why a lot of transgender uh, transgendered people had to hide in the closet or, uh, you know, suffer being attacked by people. Uh, look at the Stonewall riot riots where Various people from the LGBTQ community came together to protest. Uh, transgendered people were there. A device and argument used for advocates that seems to be the, the one thing they always just come back to. Anyone who asks a question has any issue, any question is just, you're transphobic, you're transphobic, tra you're transphobic. And unfortunately, that shot. Right. It's funny how they hate being called transphobic then in the same breath call transgender people like evil and demonic and that they need to be eradicated. That's down, I think, about 80, 90 percent of people because, I mean, as I mentioned earlier in this, I mean, it's now been over three years since I posted a, a, a flippant tweet on Twitter saying, hey, I identified as a woman. I just broke the British women's deadlift record. That was back in February 2019 when fewer people were actually talking about this. And that blew up and, and went crazy. And it just amazes me that more than three years later, this is still a, a debate. And um, it makes me wonder what's going on in Western society in particular. Well, it wouldn't still be a debate if people like you and Matt Walsh weren't trying to, you know, eradicate trans people and gay people. Particularly, it seems, English-speaking countries, the Anglosphere that is causing this psychosis, for lack of a better term. And I think it's combined with an ep a pandemic of cowardice, honestly. And one thing I really like about what you do and respect is that you're, you're, you're courageous in your speech. You, you speak up, you say the things that other people are thinking, and you've got your principles, and you stand by them whether people agree, disagree. You don't cower and apologize for you know, absolutely everything. And that is, that's rare. Is that something that's always been within you or is that something that you've kind of learned and developed over? I mean, it's not really brave to be hateful and stand behind a uh, religious book that has the backing of a large group of people that, you know, feel the same. I mean, was it brave when the KKK went around killing black people? because they didn't like uh, how black people were uh, moving into different uh, positions in society and being seen differently? Over time. Uh, I, I think uh, I've always had, see, I, I don't take a lot of credit for it because I'm also, uh, I, I'm, I, I think I'm naturally antagonistic also <laughs> and kind of a contrarian. So I, I have that and that's why I, I, call, I call on some of that. I mean. The, there, there are many times in life when it doesn't really benefit you to be that way, but uh, for me, I, I, that's, that's kind of how I am. Mm -hmm. So um, it's not, that's why it's not, uh, it's, to be courageous is like you have to actually be 
a courageous thing is when you do something mm -hmm. and you're, you're really afraid to do it, mm -hmm. and, but you do it anyway. That's courage, yes. right? Um, but for me, with a lot of this stuff, I'm not, it just, I'm not afraid. So yeah. You don't have to call on courage. And when I say that, it sounds like self-congratulatory. I'm not mm -hmm. afraid of anything. Um, I don't mean it in that way. I just mean yeah, it, doesn't, I, I, it doesn't occur to me to worry about it. It's like when uh, a lot of people are very worried. Honest, though, he, he is afraid. If he wasn't um, afraid of getting backlash for actually saying directly what he wants to see happen to trans people and other people he, he dislikes, he would probably get, you know, banned off of YouTube. And he doesn't want that because it's money. About being labeled, you know, and they don't, you, you call them, call someone racist, a homophobe, a transphobe. For a lot of people, that affects them deeply yeah. to be called that. They don't want to be perceived that way. And so you can. Well, okay. If you don't want to be called, if you don't want to be perceived as some kind of phobic person, well then don't be racist. Don't be homophobic or transphobic and be accepting of people. It's easy as that, but people like Matt Walsh, they don't. You manipulate them. Mm -hmm. Um, and you're actually, it's, it's quite sinister because you're taking advantage of what is in that person a positive quality where they, you know, they don't want to be seen in a bad light and they, they're just decent, normal people. And, um, and then that's how they end up getting manipulated. But for me, I just, I just don't care yeah. at all <laughs> the labels that you put on me. If you say to me, oh, I think you're racist, I, I, doesn't, I don't care that you think that about me. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, because I know myself, I know what I am. I don't, I don't, it doesn't matter to me at all. Yeah. Yes, he knows he's racist. And what he wants to see is black people dying. You. So there is, I think almost to survive, and especially to do kind of what we do and to be in the you know, public eye and to be engaging these issues all the time, mm. there's almost this kind of like numbness you have to have to other people's opinions and feelings. And once again, that's something that in other spheres of life, I'm not sure that it's a positive thing all the time, <laughs> but it does feel, it's almost a necessity yeah. these days because there's so much coming at you all the time. Mm. And, uh, you know, you could have a, a million people coming after you, calling you all kinds of names. And it's almost a survival mechanism. You have to yeah. get to a point where it's just like, I don't care what any yeah. of you people think. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I agree exactly with what you said because I get a lot of people who congratulate or thank me for my, my courage. And I have a similar response to you, which is that I, I think in one way it's a compliment. In another way, I feel sort of saddened that the bar for courage in society is, is so low that just... Well, it's not that the bar for courage is so low, it's that these people have no idea how to use the word courageous properly. What is courageous is what is fighting against a society that wants to see your existence erased. That's true bravery right there. Just saying what you believe to be true, or in some cases something that is objectively true, yeah. is now considered something that requires a unique and special amount of courage when I think really it should be the, the default. So why do you think that why do you think so, so few people have that level of courage? Because we're not talking about, you know, fighting, it, fighting in a war or running into a burning building and saving someone. We're, we're talking about, okay, you might get called mean names, but you're, you're not really putting yourself at some type of horrible physical risk. But it seems like now people's tolerance for, for risk, we saw this as well over the past two and a half years, yeah. the, the tolerance for risk is, is, is zero. I think there's a lot that goes into it. Part of it is just living this comfortable Western life um, where you, you, you can go about most of your life and on a daily basis and not really experience very much suffering and pain. And, uh, those, you uh, it depends on what class of society you live in and where you live at. You start to see that as the exception more than the rule with life. Whereas previous generations and even people now that live in other parts of the world, Suffering, pain, deprivation, that's not an exception. That's just, that's just part of life. It's part of the deal. It's part of the bargain. Uh, we, we've been able to insulate ourselves from that. And so then it, it kind of makes you weak. And it also makes you feel like you're entitled to that kind of comfort all the time. And um, 
when anything comes along that threatens to, to take you out of that and make you a little bit uncomfortable, you, you recoil from it even more. Um, and so I think that's, that's part of it. People don't want, because we're so comfortable and weak, that even just disapproving comments, people posting frowny face emojis at you becomes, <laughs> it's a real trial. Mm. Compared okay, so we're six minutes in, and they have yet to explain how transgenderism is a doctrine for bullies. Is he saying he's being bullied by people sending him emojis and calling him racist and stuff? Compared to what you experience on a daily basis. Then another part of it also is, it's, I think it's also a matter of belief. Mm -hmm. um, and this really applies especially in the churches. So I get a question a lot about, well, uh, with, with this film coming out, what is a woman? And uh, one question I get a lot is, well, you know, wh why aren't the churches talking about this more? Why... Why are, why are you out here doing this? Why isn't it? Why isn't the churches talking about this more? Yeah, yeah. depending on the church you go to, yeah, they're always talking about it. Or something else they find demonic. You know, gay people, video games, movies, TV shows, um, uh, what, whatever. Because these right-wing Christians, they always need something to be afraid of. Because if they're not afraid, or if they're not fear-mongering others, they're not happy in life. Or, well, for people like Matt Walsh and like uh, right-wing uh, pastors and stuff, they do the fear-monger because it's easier to control these people and, you know, get money out of them. Uh, why aren't church leaders out addressing this issue of gender ideology and what it's doing to people? And which is a really good question because they should be. You know, I've been going to church every week for my whole life. Uh, I don't. I, I don't think I've ever heard this issue addressed from the pulpit in a in a really direct and substantial way. Um, and maybe you can excuse that for like the first twenty years of my life, but the last ten to fifteen, there's no excuse not to talk about. It. They don't. Mm. Why is that? Well, they. I can see why Matt Walsh is such a racist, transphobic bigot who's been going to right-wing churches for all his life so that's all he believes and it's funny how this dude claims to be like all about truth and stuff but he believes in a fictional uh deity because that's what he's been told there there's the cowardice also but then also i think it, it comes down to belief i think a lot of the people leading these churches don't actually believe what we believe, they're pretending. They don't actually have this belief deep down within. Uh, and I think it goes beyond the church also. There are a lot of conservative, so-called conservative leaders who we look at them and say, why are they cowards? Why aren't they speaking out um, and defending our beliefs? Because they don't share the beliefs, actually. They don't, they don't, that's the dirty little secret. They don't actually believe a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Um, for me, I actually, I believe all the things that I'm saying. I wouldn't say it if I didn't believe it. So uh, everything springs kind of naturally from there. I mean, gender ideology. I, I say that it's uh, a clear and present danger to civilization. <clears throat> a clear and present danger to civilization. So at a moment's notice, civilization is going to uh, collapse because of trans people. That is wild. I, I love that people like Matt Walsh think that these people are so dangerous to them and their own beliefs that they think they're a threat to society. This, But this is how right-wingers have always thought about uh, various people of the queer community of... Uh, you know, like when uh, when black people wanted rights, uh, right wingers, right wing Christians thought society was going to collapse. When women wanted rights, they thought the same thing. When uh, black people didn't want to be slaves anymore, they thought the same and even fought a war to keep those people in chains. Uh, what? When uh, Dungeons and Dragons became big like back in the 90s there was a satanic panic over D, &D and right-wing christians thought society was going to clap collapse 
And, you know, these people were going to summon uh, Lucifer into the mortal realm and, you know, rain havoc everywhere. These people are stupid. We are destroying a generation of kids. You know, my, my whole spiel on this. Destroying a generation of kids. That is what religion does to people. It, he wants to, you know, do an investigation on, like, the negative impact of, like, transgenderism on kids how about we check out the negative impact of uh religion on kids because that is definitely a lot more harmful you know if if you grow up being told every single day of your life that you're evil and sinful because you were born and if you don't do all these rich ritualistic bs uh behaviors and have this you know, dumb mindset, you're going to be, you know, tortured in a lake of fire forever, that's going to give you a lot of trauma. Uh, so, uh, people, people like Matt Walsh, they're just fucked up. That's all it is. I actually believe all that stuff. I really believe deep down that all that is true. And if you believe that, you believe that something is that much of a danger to society and to your own kids, mm. then uh, what else are you going to do but speak yeah. up and i mean you you wrote a book on this really you wrote, I mean literally called church of uh let's look at let's look at history and see how many wars were started because of transgender people compared to how many wars were started by christian people how many crusades were there and how many you know people died in those crusades how many people died uh uh, during the Salem witch trials, all this was not done by trans people. They were done by Christian people. Christianity is more of a danger to society. Of cowards. Um, excellent book. I read. I read that all the way through, and that's something that also I found. I found disappointing, um, and I also found it disappointing over the past two and a half years. I mean, I saw there were places where, you know churches were look at look at like uh the Joan of Arc story she saved her nation from whatever or she she got involved in the war uh led her side to victory but because she was a woman who dressed as a man they killed her even though she claimed that God told her to do all that. They killed her because she was a man. That shows like how much uh, religious nuts like these people hate people dressing in the opposite clothing to the point that even though you could be highly religious and, and say that God told you to do this and you save thousands of people, they will kill you because they consider you to be evil. Oops. Shut down across the board and then yeah. they, they opened casinos and strip clubs and all this and that. And I, I was primarily in the UK during this time, but I was thinking, wait, how come all the, shouldn't the religious leaders be, not just church leaders, but all religious leaders. I mean, the, the way they just allowed bureaucrats to, to shut them down wouldn't, should we get rid of all Shakespearean plays and stuff? Because during those times, women weren't allowed to be in theater. So in order to fulfill women's parts, men had to dress as women. I guess uh, Shakespeare is transgender ideology? With no, with no fight. I think it's one thing, something happening and you're attempting to resist it. And there's another thing when it's pressing against you and you just say, oh, okay, let's just, let's just go with yeah. that. Or, you know, or, or even you're the one calling for it. And that just, it, it, kind, it kind of hurt <laughs> like, <laughs> in my heart. I was just like, man, this is, this is so disappointing yeah. with, you know, what's the point of all this if no one's going to stand for, if no one's going to stand for, for anything. And as someone who travels a lot, so much of this stuff, oftentimes people say the world is going crazy and everyone's going nuts. And 
I mean, you, you somewhat explored this in your documentary, but I think when people say that, it's a very Western-centric perspective because so many of the so many of the, the, the bad ideas and these, these mental pathogens that are, are spreading. Wow, mental pathogens. Again, uh, describing uh, transgender people as like infectors, infecting society with their evil, which is, you know, how Nazis describe people. It's how the KKK described uh, black people uh, when they were, you know, after they got freed and, you know, KKK was going around killing people. The, the idea that there are, these people are infecting others with their black ideas and wanting to be free and equal to the white man, they, it, it, it's a way to demonize uh, people and make it so that, uh, you know, when people on their side kill the, the people on the other side, they have no feelings whatsoever about it. They're happy because they're sterilizing the world of these infectors. It's primarily in the Western world. It's, it's the US, it's Canada, UK, Australia, New Zealand, some parts of Western Europe. But actually the vast majority of people in the world, most of these billions of people, have the exact same view as uh, as we do, as the, the Maasai tribe that you spoke to in, in your documentary, What is a Woman? And that's actually the, that's actually the popular mainstream per perspective. I mean, what percentage of people in this world actually believe that a, a woman can have a penis or men can give birth and so on? These are... A lot of people do. Um, for the longest of times, uh, the idea of uh, trans people was very common. Uh, if you look at various uh, ancient religions, there are many gods that had that would commonly turn men into women to be their priestess. You had in like uh, the Greek culture, Greek religion, you had Hermaphrodites, who was the god of hermaphrodites uh, at, during those times. That's the term that was used. Now he could be considered the god of transgender people. He, the god, was a person born with both sets of genitalia. Uh, the idea of like trans people have always existed, and it's just been more so during the rise of Christianity and the Abrahamic religions where uh, these people have been persecuted. These are very, very fringe and minority views, which somehow have created this appearance that they are the, the, most, the most commonly held one in the world. And I feel like that happens on a lot of issues. So it can seem like common sense is, is completely gone and everyone's wrapped up in this psychosis. But I don't think that's true. I do think most people are normal and most people know, sure, people have different opinions, the only people with psychosis are the right-wing religious nuts who want to see the eradication of trans people.